Alright, what's up guys? It's probably a bit of a different video today. I've been streaming myself, editing stream highlights a lot lately, and uh, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, like, how do you do it? How to get started? Just, yeah, a lot of stuff like that. So, hopefully this video will help a lot of you guys out if you're looking to get into it, or just need some help. I've been editing stream highlights for probably about two years or something now, so I know a little bit on what to do. Obviously not everything, but hopefully enough to help some people out. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's just fucking get into it. So the first thing that a lot of people ask me is how do they find a streamer to actually edit for in the first place? Uh, honestly, most of it is just keeping an eye out on Twitter or hitting the person up yourself. First off, there is this Discord channel here that I'll put a link to in the description. Wait, can I make a... Alright, cool. Yeah, anyway, I'll put a link to that in the description or something where people post their jobs in here. So that's one thing. I think the other big way to find streamers would be to just keep an eye out on Twitter. So, the main people I edit for right now, Nightblue, Noah, Sneaky, and Poe Belter. Nightblue put out a tweet saying he was looking for an editor, so I just emailed him some of my work, and he was like, yep, cool. And I did a few trial videos, and then it just kind of went from there. Noah, same deal, put out a tweet. Sneaky was from that Discord that I'll link, and Poe Belter was just through, like, networking from other people I've edited for. So, this dude been kind of popping off on Twitch lately, and if you keep an eye out on things, hang on, let me actually find the example, you fucking, alright, this type of tweet right here, looking for an editor who will go through my VODs and make a vid for me every stream, PM me, or add people who you think should do the job, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, so if you are just starting out and you don't really have any work or anything, I would recommend getting just any streamer, any streamer that you enjoy watching, get a VOD of them, make like a uh, test video, not even a test video, just make like, the best video you can so you have work to actually send people and then once you get your first job or your first two jobs and you start pushing out some stuff then yeah obviously you'll have that to send them but it's a good way to start out anyway so with that being said let's just assume you guys have a streamer to edit for now and you need to get the vods what i use is either twitch leecher which you guys can find here just download that download the exe install it and then once it opens up, basically you want to do this. You just go to, yeah, what is it? Search, URLs, get the like VOD URL, paste it in, and then you'll be able to download it from there. The other way, uh, a lot of streamers will have an FTP, which is basically like they'll record the VOD and they'll upload it themselves because the problem with Twitch Leecher is if the streamer listens to music and the music's copyrighted, it'll mute the VOD. And then when you download it, that part will be muted as well. So you see like those red parts there, that's all just completely muted. But ideally, you want the streamer to upload the videos themselves, like record them separately, but no, you gotta work with what you're given. So once you get the VOD, I'll just make a new project here. I use Adobe Premiere by the way guys, which is, um, you guys can use whatever you want. I'm just more comfortable with Premiere. Vegas works fine. A lot of people bash on Vegas, but honestly it works fine. It's just whatever you're comfortable with. So for Premiere, you just go file, new project. I'm just gonna assume like a lot of you guys haven't done much of this before. So I'll try to go through as much as I can. Uh, go browse. Uh, I would recommend getting like a little stream work folder so you can keep everything organized and for example I've got all the people who I've worked for in like the last six months. Let's go make a new fucking project. I've already done it so I'm just gonna open it. Alright so you go get the VOD that you downloaded, drag it in and then once it's in here drag it down to the timeline and that'll make you a new sequence which is when this comes up. A lot of the time when you're working with like footage from Twitch, you'll get a problem where the footage is variable frame rate instead of constant. And it happens like a lot of the time. So I'll teach you guys how to fix that later. If you have CC 2018 Premiere, I think in Vegas, maybe it works fine as well, but I'm not sure. But any version of Premiere before 2018, it'll like fuck up and the audio will be out of sync. So I'll just teach you guys how to fix that later. All right, so to fix the audio when it goes out of sync, get a program called handbrake it's free and then you can download it here go ahead open it up uh this will come up so you get like the vod that you downloaded i think mine is this one let it load up this is i made a preset but i'll show you the settings all right so just go through this and copy the settings make sure on this part constant frame rate is ticked and make sure it is 60. And then, yeah, just copy everything else. Make that 360, fucking 320 actually. Yep, 
and that's it. Just make sure that's 320. And then go browse. Type pull VOD 5 save and then just go start and code and then you're good all right so now we've got our streamer we've got the vod we've dragged the footage in uh i'm gonna show you guys my hotkeys quickly or my shortcuts i guess whatever you want to call them that's everything i use but the only keys i really actually use is f to zoom out g to zoom in uh c to cut so if i want to cut something i'll just highlight it press c and press c again so i've got this part and then X to ripple delete. And what that'll do is so, so I want to delete that instead of deleting it. And then you just have to drag that back and it's real fucking, it's just a hassle, all right? When you have to do like a 10 minute video, you got to drag it back every time. It just gets annoying. So what ripple delete does is if you highlight it and you press X, which is my shortcut for it, it'll delete it and then bring the next one back in. So that's really like the only shortcut. So, oh yeah. And then like space bar to play, of course. So the order I normally do things is if I don't have the game already, I'll find a good game that I want to put in the video. An easy way to do this is, if you don't know which one you want to work on, just go to skip to like the end of the game and just have like a quick look at the score if you're doing it with league footage. All right, so let's just say I want to use this game. I'll cut it out, drag that to the end if I want to use like other games and like from the VOD. And go back. And then I'll start cutting everything out. Like, so he gets a kill here. I'll just cut this part out. All right, delete the part I don't want, and then I'll just keep going through. I'll do that for like the whole video, so he gets another kill here. So I'll cut this out. Eat late. And then yeah, by the time, just keep doing that until you have like 10 minutes. You'll probably have to use, well, you might have to use more than one game. I don't know, it really depends on what you're going for. But yeah, basically just keep doing that until you're happy. Then, all right, so I'm just gonna keep this part here. Let's say this is, let's just pretend this is like the whole video, right? Um, what I'll do from there, I'll go through. I'm not gonna go too much into like specific effects because I wanna keep this video like under fucking an hour but i will say and this goes for pretty much everything that's not in this video because i know a lot of the stuff i'm probably not going to cover like there's definitely going to be shit that i miss out on so everything that i learned i learned off like either youtube tutorials or google so for example when i first started using premiere i was confused right because these two layers they would always be linked together so i was like fucking google why is my shit stuck together in premiere and then i found out i found the answer all I had to do is right click, go on link, and then it was like fixed. Yeah, since it's like inevitable, I'm going to miss shit that you guys probably want to know. Just, yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, all right, so first things first, the way I do my transitions. Oh yeah, I'd, I'd like recommend doing this as well. Uh, so make yourself a folder with like the main effects that you use and just chuck them all in there so it's easy to access. All right, anyway, when you've got like the whole video, let's just say this part is your video. Um, then I'll go through, I'll put in effects, I'll put in transitions. The main things I would keep in mind is try to build like a theme for the video. So something that you can like build a title around, I guess. Because the bottom line is like videos that are just named stream highlights aren't really going to get clicks on YouTube. Whereas if you're editing like a Fortnite video and it's like, well, like a 23 kill solo squad game, you know, like titling it, stuff like that, that's going to get clicks as opposed to just like Pro Belter stream highlights number one. And then next week you release a video, it's like Pro Belter stream highlights number two. Like people are probably not going to click on that. Anyway, getting a bit sidetracked. So I'll go through the way I do my transitions is with a plugin called Swish Pan. It's from, fuck, what's it called? Yeah, Sapphire. Uh, you guys can like Google this, download it, whatever way you want. You don't need to do it this way. This is just how I do it. I'll show you another way if you don't have the plugin. But uh, yeah. So you drag it onto your clip and then go to effects controls. By the way, if you guys don't have any of like these windows that you see right now, it'll say the name before it. So you see it says like project effects, effects controls. That's called program. It's called source. Um, go to window and you can like choose everything that pops up here. So if I wanted media browser, which a lot of people use, I don't use it. Then it'll like pop up. You can drag and drop these windows anywhere. If I wanted it there, I'll just do that. But yeah so you drag it onto the clip if it's 60 frames which most I, I would even if the vod is 30 fps i would recommend rendering at 60 and like having the project at 60 just because youtube will give you a high bit rate 
Um, to check it in Premiere, go sequence, sequence settings. Yeah, you see this one is 30 FPS. So change that to 60 and then make sure, where is it? Make sure this says 60 FPS time code. Otherwise it's going to look weird, like on the timeline. So a transition for 60 FPS, what I do, I just clip it, drag it up a layer, drag it back 10 frames which is again just my personal preference that's what i like for the length and then with swish pan you just do the white percent and you keyframe it like this so you click the stopwatch drag it forward the stopwatch again and then it's like and that's how you do the transition uh as for like the swish sound actually i'll make like a little i'll make a pack with like the most used sound effects i use it's pretty small oh yeah there's another reason why you make like your fucking little library of sound effects and like projects and stuff so this is every single night blue video i've ever done so i'm like at the point now where if i just need a sound effect i'll just like search it up so if i like wanted to look up a sound i just type it in and then yeah it'll come up because at some point during these hundred videos i've like used the sound besides from that if you want a sound this is literally all i do all right i'll go to youtube and i'll be like Nope, sound effect. Nope. And then I'll just YouTube to MP3 it. I use a plugin. You can do YouTube to MP3 or whatever you want. Um, the plugin I use is called YouTube Downloader. There you go. So you can Google that and get it if you want. If not, just, yeah, YouTube to MP3 it. And that's all I do for my sound effects. As for like the swoosh sounds and like transitions and stuff, I'll, uh, I'll make like a little fucking starter pack folder and put all the sounds in there. So you just drag the folder in, double click it, that'll normally open it up here. And then what I do, I double click it, that should bring it up in the source window like I said before. If you don't have a window, just like click window. So if I didn't have source, I'll just like close it. If I didn't have it, click source monitor, that'll open it. I'll probably make it like fucking somewhere else, but you just drag it there. Um, yeah, so I double click on this. If you want to only drag in part of a sound, press I where you want it to begin and press O where you want it to like end, I guess. And then you drag it there and then yeah, whoop, cool transition. Um, one thing I'll recommend doing that a lot of people, well, I don't know, I don't know if anyone else does it. It's just one thing I like to do, fade the audio between like the two clips between the transition. It just sounds a lot cleaner and better. Yeah, making the transition, if you don't have that plugin, I'll show you guys now. So you do the same thing, you like drag back 10 frames, but you just keyframe the position by itself instead. And then yeah, keyframe it back to, sorry, I, I won't type it in. You just drag it back. And then, yeah, if it's 1080p, like the VOD, the position will be 960 540 that's the starting position if it's 720p it'll be 640 wait if it's 720p it'll be 640 360 anyway enough of that that's how you do a transition all right very cool uh another thing you can do if you don't want to do the swipe you can either make it fade in premiere you just get the cross dissolve you drag it on and drag the constant power which is just the audio fade And then that's literally the same clip, so it didn't fade. Hold up. I'm stupid. Yeah. So there's that. One more way to transition between clips that I like to do, personally, is... Oh, fuck. Stop. This little fucking beepy screen. And yeah. Oh yeah, one more thing I do use, sorry. Um... So say you want to drag a clip in here, like in between the two things, click it and then instead of like hold it and then before you drop, hold control and it will just like slide it in there. Anyway, you scale this, change the audio levels to whatever you want. There, that's another way to transition between clips. So I mean, yeah, that's basically it. You keep doing that until the video is done, honestly. As for specific effects, a lot of it, you can search up yourself. The main things I will do is, uh, if you wanna zoom in on something, you just keyframe the position. So you click on the clip, go effect control, go to effect controls, 
click the little stopwatches, go forward. I use normally six or seven frames if it's 60 FPS. And then you just move this. And that's how you move it around in Premiere. And then, yeah, it'll zoom in. You can do the same with like text or whatever. If you want to move it around, that's just how you do it. Oh yeah, one more thing. If you're doing the like other transition without the plugin, since Premiere doesn't have motion blur built in, you have to like kind of fake it if you don't have the swish pan plugin. So what I do is keyframe it to whatever you want, then get directional blur, drag it on, and then I think you change that to 90. No? What the fuck? Oh wait, I'm stupid. Change the direction to 90 and then keyframe the length. So at the start, zero, go forward one frame, make it 15. And before it ends, keyframe it again and then make it go back to zero. So you're like faking the motion blur. It's not as good as Swish Pan. I'd recommend like getting the plugin, but yeah, just another way to do it. Then, oh yeah, cool. Once the video is done, go file, go export, media. Then it'll bring this up, hold it, whatever you want. Cool vid five. And then copy these settings, change that to 13, change that to 14. YouTube is, I know a lot of people like, I can render it at like way higher quality than this. YouTube's just gonna compress the shit out of it anyway, so there's not much point. But the main things is make sure it's 60 FPS, make sure it's at least 13 like under the target bit rate and then change the audio quality make sure that's 320 kilobits kilobytes i don't know which one it is and then yeah just go export and that's basically it yeah i don't really know what else to put in this video i know there's like gonna be hella shit i missed out on so if you guys want a super specific tutorial i can probably make it just leave it in the comments below keep in mind what i said before about you know literally every effect you can learn there's like a tutorial on every effect on youtube everything that you could ever need but uh yeah hopefully that could help you guys out a little bit yeah hope you enjoyed catch up